people I spoke to was Ian Chappell. And I said to him, I said, listen, mate, I really think it's my time. It's time to retire. Um, and I suppose at that time you're looking for people to say, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Um, and you're just trying to gauge what people want to say and how they say and how they react to when you, want, you say that, yeah, I'm going to retire. First of all, it's a bit of a shock, like, no, we don't want you to go, we want you to hang around. But it has to come to an end. But uh, he said to me, it's better they say to you, why did you, rather than why didn't you? Yes. Or why don't you, you know? Yes, so, right, yeah. Yeah. and I thought about that. And once he said that to me, that well, I was 9 million percent. You know, I knew it already, but that, I said, well, that's spot on. And to, to have that opportunity, a lot of sportsmen don't have, to go out on top when you're still taking Fifa, smashing 70, taking some catches and you're doing really well. It's a great time to get, be able to go out on top and to do it with a team, to have the opportunity to play in a team like we have this summer, it's to win 5-0 and it's play it's the cricket we've played. It's a great team. I'm playing it one couldn't one have gone any better. No. Let's, let's be reminded, of going back in your career again, a bit more action now. I asked you to pick a couple of uh, which yep. that particularly you enjoyed. And one is this, this but you're bowling Chandra Paul. Now, what, 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 why did you choose this? this uh, my first finger operation was in 96 and um, I went through a lot of hard work, probably two or three hours of bowling a day uh, for probably a few months every day uh, to try and find that well, feeling back. Well, well, what happened is how it changed a bit was when I had my finger operation, it's all about a feel. And I used to have uh, a ball in my hand that I used to flick like this and do all the different deliveries in my hand to get a feel to how it come out. And then I'd go and bowl hour after hour in the nets by myself or with my brother and just keep bowling to get that muscle memory, to get that feel. And uh, when I broke my finger, it was a completely different feel. And I had, I remember standing at the Sydney Cricket Ground Nets with Terry Jenner and we were bowling and I was starting to spin. And I said to TJ, I said, he said, how did that feel? And I like, like, proud, like, how did that feel? And I went, well, oh, okay. He said, well, it was sensational. It drifted in, it spun big. And I said, well, I didn't feel that. It didn't feel like it used to. So suddenly that clicked both of us that it was a different feel now with your finger. And I mean, look at it. I mean, it's still, that's how it is. Yes. I don't know if you can see that, but it, yeah. it's bent. So it, it, it took a bit of time to get that feel. And in this test match in Sydney with Chandapal, this was the first time that I actually had that feel where I bowled the delivery. And I, as it went left my hand, it felt good. And I could see it just drift away. And I went and saw him go back to cut. And I thought, I was thinking to myself, spin, spin, spin. And it ragged back, hit him on the pad and smashed his stumps over. And it was probably the furthest I've ever turned a ball to get a wicket. And that gave me confidence that I could keep going. You spin this so much that Steve Orr was saying that when he first appealed at short leg for you, that, that he could hear go... Yeah, you could hear the, I suppose, the revolutions on it. As yeah. the time got over, there wasn't as many on it. But uh, <laughs> Let's have a look when at I first that. started, you Let's could have a look hear. At this. Here this one, you would have heard it. <laughs> And he has struck just before lunch. So that was a significant moment again, a personal memory of that. It was, and if you, if you look at it from front on... Let, uh, have we got in slow motion? Let's have a look. If you look at it from front on, you can actually see when it leaves my hand. You can see it sort of drift away. And he starts to he go does, back. There it is. Right, it just starts to drift. Then he goes then, back. Oof, yeah. Oof. And then you can see it spin. Yeah. So that, for me, was something that... Um, that, for me, knows that it, it is a different feel. But that was the first ball I'd bowl that I could actually feel the difference, but I could still achieve spinning the ball. So that was a major one for me. And another major one would be your first hat trick in a test match. And only one. And only one? Yeah. Against? Against England. <laughs> I actually... It was the, the, the test match before in Brisbane, I had an opportunity. I, I, I got two wickets in a row. I got McKay with a flipper, and Phil Tufnell came out to bat. Ah. And I thought, what's the least thing he's expecting? <laughs> And then I thought, he's probably not expecting it. He doesn't know what he's coming. So I thought, I'll bowl it wrong and he'll just push forward. And I went over the top of the stumps and missed it. So I thought, oh, I've missed my opportunity for a hat-trick. The next test match was in Melbourne. And um, I remember I, I got the two wickets and then Devin Malcolm came out looking like Robocop. <laughs> he just padded up with all this sort of stuff. And I thought, I'm only bowling leggies. It's not that hard. <laughs> and, um, you know, it just, it was uh, my family, there was friends. I don't know how many people there. There was a, a lot of people there. But my family and friends were all there. And, and it's always a special time, the Melbourne Test Match, and the Sydney one. But it's Christmas, and it's the, your kids and your family and sharing that time about, you know, seeing your relatives. Sometimes you mightn't want to see them, but seeing them, you haven't seen them for a year. Um, I'm not saying I do. Some people mightn't. But um, it's just that time, and it's a happy time. So to actually achieve the hat-trick, which is pretty hard to do, there hasn't been a lot of them. It's my only one I've ever done in any form of cricket. 
Um, it's like a hole in one. I've never got close to that. But it's my only ever hat trick in underage cricket or whatever. It was just one of those moments. It was David Boone's birthday. He took a screamer. That's and, a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a wonderful catch. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was just, it was just a special time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's sort of. Warn continuing. Yeah, that's a beautiful catch. Yeah, that's Oh, and that's out. Good behind. Yes, he got a plus ball. Beautifully made by Ward. Good just pushing forward. Just put it, just bounced on him a bit. Good catch from him, really. Let's see if third one. There we go. And then Devin Malcolm comes out. Have a look at him with Robocop. At this stage, I'm thinking the top spinner that doesn't spin too much to make him play. He played, grabbed it. That's some catch. When you see that thing so down. He thought it was a cold beer, so he died for it. <laughs> Look at that. Cold beer, I'll get that one. <laughs> oh, but that was a special moment. Can we talk now about the, the other side of your of your career, the, yep. the downside of it of it all? Um, if you have to. Well. <laughs> now you go for it, my ass, whatever you like. The, you mentioned there your, your finger and your, your arm. I mean, the body of... the. You've taken a terrible toll. Yeah. And you were done on a, on a drugs uh, charge, uh, yeah. diuretic, um, you tested positive for. And then there was the business about the um, bookie scandal, the so-called, yeah. where you took money from a, a bookmaker uh, to pass on information about the ground, the conditions and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Which of those two, do you think, in the long run, looking back now, have done have lingered most? Which are the ones that, that you think have damaged you most? Oh, all of them. All my mistakes, I think. Out of those two there, sometimes what you actually read in the paper is not exactly how it goes. I've never really had an opportunity to... I've sort of tried to say it in a book the way it was and things like that. First of all, the bookmaker stuff. That was uh, a friend of Mark Wars that I was introduced at a casino where I lost $5,000 of my own money. Yes. And the next day, he contacted me in my room uh, this guy who was called John, who I met as a friend of Mark Wars, not as a bookmaker, who I didn't know that he was a bookmaker. He was a friend. And a friend of Mark's is a friend of mine. And uh, that day he, told, he said to me, he said, look, no strings attached. You're one of my favourite players. Um, you know, I, I love what you've done for Australia. What you've done in the cricket field is fantastic. I saw you lose $5,000 at casino. Here's $5,000, a token of my appreciation. No strings attached, no nothing. And I think, well, hang on, no, I'm fine, mate. I don't, I've got money, I don't need your money. He said, mate, I'm a very wealthy man. I've done okay. He never told me he was a bookmaker. I didn't know that. And uh, went on and on and on. In the end, he gave me the five grand. And to my, my mistake was to take it. Even though he said there was no strings attached to nothing, my mistake was to take it. I took it up the road to Sri Lanka and lost it at the casino again. Um, but it, my mistake was to take it because I suppose you get nothing for nothing. It was a stupid thing to do. Yeah, it yeah. was. And that's what I'm saying it was. Yeah, sure. So later on that, he, he rang me up in Christmas time and New Year and asked simple questions like the media. You know, like, you know, how's the wicket? Yeah, it's good, John. Yeah, it's no worries. Hopefully it'll be all right, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I then found out later that when Mark Warren and I called into Cricket Australia that he was a bookmaker and that I had given information, which I said, well, I didn't knowingly give information to this guy. It's nothing more than I'd say at a press conference. But the fact of the matter was he was a bookmaker. I did take the money off him, um, but I didn't actually know that. So if I had to know that, once I found out that, I never took any call again from him or did anything like that. Mm. So that was at the drug thing. Mm. Uh, that was pure vanity. There was nothing else. There was no sinister things to it. Uh, and what people hasn't been reported is that every single test they've done, they said it, the reason I got done for only 12 months rather than the mandatory two years is that they said, well, because we've done all the tests, they were exactly the same in everything and it didn't mask anything. So they could have tested for whatever they wanted, which they did. The allegation was that it masked an anabolic steroid, which you'd use to get over oh, your shoulder. shoulder which is incorrect and lies. And, and it had been proven in the court that we went there, or the uh, whatever you, it was like a court set up, um, that it was because every single test they'd done for me over the period I've been playing, the period they've been testing, and the test they did there where I tested for a banned substance was exactly the same. There was nothing else in there except for this thing that was on a ban. And our point was, well, why should 